episode of Crook Critique pulls on point. Hey, uh, today it's just yeah. Today it's it's a it's, uh, small small team today. No, no, no. Small. It's taking the stand. <gasps> <gasps> it's a taking the stand day. Is it? Oh boy. I what are we taking the stand over, Ellie? Oh wait, yeah. sorry, I I have the wrong lay- layout. <laughs> hey, God, now it this stays God, in. Damn it. This stays. This in. better stand. <laughs> um, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> we pride ourselves on professionalism here. Yeah, man. So while while um, Ellie fixes fixes his mistake, um, <laughs> today we're gonna be talking about um, the grand poppy. Of all isekais, the uh, the chosen uh, progenitor, according to some sources that I have heard. Um, oh yeah, the origin of all. No, uh, no other influences prior. Yeah, clearly there was no there was no combination of things that led to this trend. But look, look, this this show came out this year. So how can it possibly? Be, be older than any other isekai known to man. Damn. <laughs> po- how how could it possibly? Look, the anime only came out this year, guys. Yeah, it came out the after. Facts and logic. So it would have to be some sort of elitist to like suggest that you actually need to put in research on the things you fucking review. You f- you you little you uh, little prick. So 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 Ali brought this this video from. From our old pal Glass of Frictions. Well, never we I, never did a video on him before, right? Yeah, we well, well, we've never done a video on him before. But, I've uh, watched his Gundam, uh, his uh, introduction to Gundam video, and that was actually a pretty all right, you know. Yeah, this I, intro. I have, I've been, well, I, I used to watch a lot of Glass Reflection back in the day, like around like the early days, right back when back when people was make still making anime video, like. People were making shit uh, on like um, their own websites, like Desu Desu, you know. And when you know Jay Zero Taku used to actually make good back content. when there was actual content, yeah, just back around when pe- back back when it was actual fans of shit just making these two forty p fucking anime clips either to give a reviews of these shows back in the back in the good good old days there's there um, surprisingly just a new market for that because nobody's really doing it yeah yeah um but go, yeah so glass of frictions he's a fella who's been around for quite a long time in the scene so he's he's got quite a large discography discography he's very famous for um hating school days is he uh, also, he is, so we already know he's not a man of culture no, um, he's he's very famous for a review he did on School Days, and also this one clip from the old podcast they used to do called Potaku, where it was him, Gigak, um, I think her name was Jean or something, um, and and there's a very famous clip of him literally just fucking losing his shit over Jean saying that she liked School Days, and him just <laughs> fucking losing his mind about it, uh-huh. like. It's it's uh, maybe we'll go find that later. Lolly, what what was it. his what was his like issue with that that it would cause such a um, visceral reaction? I think he just I think it's just like the fact that the anime. No, I haven't watched it. Right, you haven't this watched School Days. The, I know I'm uncultured, but listen, I'm gonna have listen. to drag your ass so we can watch some shit because I cannot yeah, let man. I I cannot let cannot a friend <laughs> not watch School Days. So I think he was like, "Oh, it's a generic." He he hated the main character getting with all the girls, and then he hated him getting like the ending. And so he hated the character being written in a way that's unconventional, and he also hated the ending in which he actually gets a a sort of moral justice for his actions, and as a result, it's generic. Gotcha. Apparent, apparently. Yeah, the one thing I I watched school days way back when, where man koto was a thing that people said unironically. So, so, and it, so yeah, so I still say it unironically. So, so it's my, not my overall. Oh, sorry. I, it's I it's, it's, it's not unco- It's not typical or conventional in the slightest. Hmm. So, glass reflections is an old, uh, uh, what we would call an, um, an old if word, right? <laughs> an old an old if word. But he um he's been around for quite a long time. He's he's done a lot of reviews. He's often kind of used as like 
a, a very normy kind of baseline type. Oh yeah, if you want anime reviews, you go to go to Glass Reflections. He'll, yeah. he'll give you he'll give you your co- overly complicated numerical score value as to how you should judge this anime. Or something. I guess it's on average better than Mother's Basement. Mm. So with enough sort of backstory and lore aside um well should watching... i if you if you give your entire history my history with glass reflection is i sometimes watch his channel to look up for videos to cover i say hyena or vulture going around you any tube <laughs> and i never i never really like his videos personally they're always fine i guess but this is a, kind of the first video that i saw they're very um they're very milk toast. Is how I describe it. Yeah. Very, very like they're very safe, right? Very safe, very normy friendly, very milk toast. It's not really a whole very lot. Very advertiser can, friendly as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not there's not a whole lot that you can really go over really. It's just him talking about what he thinks of an anime and giving it a score. But today, as you can see on the big today on the screen, um yeah, we're going to be watching him try... He, so he's trying to recommend it. So obviously he has a problem with it, but he's still trying to recommend it. So I'm If any of you have been watching, or are at least aware of Mushoku Tensei and any of the discussions surrounding it, you probably already know where he's going with this. I'm going to trust our audience to actually be, like, <laughs> somewhat... Aware of things. I, I, I haven't I haven't watched it or read the source material, but even I am aware. <laughs> I, I have a very good idea. Dude, he's kind of fucked up. Say. And the contrary, so, um, I do know the source material and the anime, but I'm not really familiar with the general con- discussion around it. Um. So what I from what I've gathered, um, from what I've gathered, actually, a lot of people are enjoying it because it feels like an older anime. We'll we'll get around. We'll get around to it. Let, let's 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 just kind of get into it and just see where he goes, and maybe I can talk about that a bit more. So, without any further ado, let us begin. Today, Mushoku Tensei, a fantasy isekai produced by a studio few have heard of before, based on a light novel that's been around for years, what unadapted. Studio? Now, um, what, yeah, what studio? studio? Uh, he'll mention it. I think the point is the right. studio was founded to make this anime, so. You never. Oh, that's interesting. You, so you'll never. You wouldn't be able to have heard of it before because it, because it didn't didn't exist before this. Huh. That's actually kind of fast. Is that sarcasm that I'm not getting? No. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see. Let's get. Now brought to life to become a contender for one of the better shows of the year. Rather, it had the potential to be. Anyway. Oh god, now I remember why I stopped watching. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Hear me out. Hear me out. I have a friend in real life. I have I have I have a friend on in real life who um when we were in high school would actually watch Glass Reflections every now and then, right? And no joke, my friend in high school literally looks like fucking Glass Reflections. That's yeah, kind like, of disturbing. He, he has the same same hair color, but his hair was longer in a ponytail, right? So imagine Glass Reflections right now with a ponytail. And, like, maybe a slightly smaller face. And that was my friend. <laughs> That's kind of horrifying. Could you imagine, it's, like, I, 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 knowing finally, somebody who enough, looked like, say, Digibro in real life? Funnily enough, this friend of mine has a YouTube channel where he talks about figurines. So if you want, I will I will link you a video of his later. Oh, yeah. If you could tell me. You could tell yeah, that me. was the one you showed me. Yes, yes, him. Right? If you look at both of them, they cut Like, the joke in high school was that... Um, Glass Reflection was Canadian, um, redacted, right? As in the name of this friend, right? Because I don't want to, I don't want to yeah. say, I don't want to say his real name on the cast, right? But like, <laughs> that was the running joke, is we'd just constantly be calling Glass Reflections Canadian, my friend, because obviously Glass Reflections is Canadian, and it was a running gag. Oh, so. he's Canadian. Okay, a lot <laughs> of this suddenly makes sense. Uh, but yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Just seeing his face again was like, oh fuck! Now I remember. <laughs> so anyway, let's get Wait. Oh, Ark, you should have made this video weeks ago. Except no, I shouldn't have. One of the show's major problems, which we'll get to, is something that could only be resolved 
with time. And while I'm usually one to promote the idea that you should not have to wade through episodes of to get to the good stuff, Mushoku Tensei is this weird beast where the high points of the show exist from episode one. So it's really just a matter of if those same high points are enough to offset the also existing low points. But we'll get to that. Okay. Welcome to First Reaction. Yeah. Let's jam. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Oh, I Last forgot. Reaction, oh, yeah. like I completely for forgot. Today's video being, of course, Let me the just over at Surf lower Shark, this VPN. volume. Real oh my god, quick. he's doing a VPN. Fuck it. Well, uh. Hey man, it's good money. All right. All right. <laughs> Don't worry. The audience can't hear this propaganda. Don't worry. <laughs> this, this VPN propaganda. Yeah. I should, at some point, link you guys a video that, uh, what was it, Mental Outlaw put out I, I talking about that, VPNs yeah. and, like, I've why that, they yeah. shouldn't be advertised the way they are. Yeah, I've seen that, and I've also watched... Oh, fuck. Um, I've also watched, um, someone else who made a really good video on how to make your own VPN. Um, oh. you can you can make your you can make your own VPN by just buying a Linode server and setting it up yourself to be a VPN node. So like, it, and it's it's a little bit complicated, but it's like you know if you follow the instructions, it's not you know it's doable. Yeah, I never really trust VPNs, also because they advertise so much. Like, people can't recommend it themselves or something. Why does it need to be advertised as much? But that's that's a more irrational way to distrust it. Mm. Oh, but it's right at the end. Ah, here we go. All right. All right, here we go. Back to full volume. I kind of dislike that sound effect. Quite often, when I talk about shows in particular genres, specifically the genres like Slides of Life, and in this case, Isekai, where there have been no shortage Isekai. of stories covering almost every aspect of it. In these cases, I like to well, find I have to say something. a show's quirk. The thing that this show has, which others in its genre don't. But Mushoku Tensei brings a problem with that that I didn't actually see happening with this genre, honestly. Put in simple terms, it pulled a JoJo. See, Mushoku Tensei's what? original novel is super popular, but it's also been oh. around for a while. Yeah, this that's, original that's novel for the series. Yeah, this is how I can tell he's aimed towards the army, so he has to bring up JoJo. As such, it popularized several also, this happened with Shield Hero. What the fuck is he talking about? Yeah, he's um. I mean, I, I mean, to, to give him credit, at least he's talking about it, <laughs> right? He's, he's already he's, he's already doing better than some people. He shows the actual site and the actual web novel, which is, I mean, stratospherically compared to, like, Keikuk. <laughs> don't take the video. Yeah, don't take the video. <laughs> um, but uh, it's... Also, Joe, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, um, yeah, like, so I'll give him credit where credit is due, that he's at least attempting to talk about this in a way that's palatable, right? Like, that's that's good. So, you know, let's keep going. ...that we take. Now, of course, I'm not saying that it was an originator for some of these tropes or even the genre as a whole, since, like, several other narratives came out around the same time or before it. The trapped in an MMO style of Isekai narrative have been around since the uh, early 2000s. Ah, there he shows, missteps. Like... So, if he, had, if he had cut the SAO and had the dot hat clip when he was talking about that, problem solved. <laughs> well, no. or even Luke, if he Luke. just didn't, I mean, I I would think even that hack isn't really an easy. Well, well, but to be the, fair, to be to be fair, he was talking more about like in general trapped in an MMO rather than slash isekai slash. Isekai. Yeah, that's how so, it took so, it. So, it's so still... I mean, that is a little. It's a little bit of a weasel, right? It's a little bit weaselly, but I'll 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 give him a little bit of a pass on that, right? But I do think that he should have talked about something else instead of SAO. And I, I reckon he only did SAO because obviously people are going to recognize SAO. Overlord is a far better... If you want to be trapped in Agreed. a video game isekai, Overlord is also like Holoc Horizon from a video game yeah. to an isekai. Yeah. And Log Horizon's coming up now, so he does bring it up. So. Yeah. But, yeah, but anyway, let's keep going. Log Horizon building on them from around the start of the 2010s. And hell, 
Isekai itself has been around for decades in a variety of forms, but Mushoku Tensei mm. was one of the first super popular isekai hey, pause from real our quick modern age to focus because on. I, I kind of, I mean, I get it, but I kind of don't like the, the comment of Isekai has been a, around for so many years. It's been because it's. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, you know, all the way. I mean, back. in the technical sense, in the technical sense, yes, but like when most people, I fucking Joe's Isekai video, he specifically talks about it. if you're trying to actually say anything useful about it, you have to like actually define it by current trends. Mm. Yeah, because yeah. if if you want to say like you know you have pre-token fantasy and post-token fantasy, and it's kind of important if you're talking about pre-Tolkien or past Tolkien and of course all discussion about fantasy is post-Tolkien but, so, but it's you know pre-Tolkien without the orcs and the elves established as they are is such a different thing mm. that you have to really say no no now I'm not I mean when I'm saying now fantasy I'm, to I'm adding the classical I'm adding the, the, the prefix of pre-Tolkien fantasy and then you have, you know, or classical, classical, uh, ancient era fantasy or whatnot, ancient civilization stories about mythological. But he really should, or people should, and should in general, make that distinction because it's, yeah. it, 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 it waters down any discussion of, or I mean, like in any, in any genre or, or thing, or storytelling device it waters it down if you don't narrow it down to what you're actually talking about. It's like when people don't narrow down like super robot anime with what would people would refer to as real robot. Where like yeah, both of those both of those things share a lot of elements because they're related, but the framing But they're very different. Yeah, yeah. they're very different. Yeah, and they even cross over at times, but the framing of narratives is just fundamentally different. Mm. Alright, well let's keep going. Reincarnation Isakai specifically. Now, what does this have to do with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? Well, JoJo, as a narrative, has also been around for a long time. I feel like we could just clip time. that part. Albeit, that manga started way back in the 80s, how, so it's how, probably not how does this relate to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? Amount of time that <laughs> but the point that I'm getting at is that by the time that anime production studio David Productions you mean just came make around any to give JoJo a and then anime add it at the end, and how does this relate to JoJo? <laughs> yeah. During which time, a massive handful of narrative tropes that JoJo popularized had been copied I'm gonna and utilized by countless other narrative sins, meaning in that this episode. for some people, <laughs> watching the JoJo adaptation could have felt I mean, like just watching something this, that they'd the already right seen at before. The end. Unless, of course, a decent amount of JoJo's modern JoJo audience talk. had only been watching yeah. anime for like five yeah, years or Because it's so kind of obvious. Out, in which case, that probably didn't stark. bother them. I they're seeing the tropes for I the first kind of time. dropped off at the, in the middle of Stark But in the eight to nine years since Mushoku Tensei was released of the print, anime, many of its defining aspects have been copied. And in many places, just straight up done better way cooler than least done more interestingly than what came before, which puts Microphone this adaptation in an take. awkward position of having uh, to present a narrative that yeah, some this of still us going. who have been watching the drudge no, Isakai no, for he's almost still, the last he, he's decade about the thing again, is somewhat stale. That said, Muchiko Tensei does indeed have a particular trait that few other Isakai have copied, hey. or rather a trait that they have copied, but usually not to this extreme, and also not without some kind of mitigating element. It's protagonist. If you've heard anything about this series so far, it's probably about Rudy, our newly reincarnated bundle of joy. A former slob like shut in of a man, Rudy comes from our world where his days were wasted away gouging on junk food, playing MMOs, and this watching might be our underage quickest animated episode. girls with his pants down. Mm, Eventually he finds pausing. himself on the wrong end of everyone's favorite oh, truck shaped yeah. job device and ends up whisked away to another world. Like right now he's just explaining like like yeah, he's, he has explained the protagonist. So, and I'm listening to it because I kind of want to see what his explanation is, right? So there's not really much need to pause during. Yeah, this yeah, keep now. going because we're gonna we're gonna get there. To witness his own birth. To say that Rudy is a degenerate is kind of putting it lightly. He <laughs> yeah, he is. He's fucked up. Uh, it's like that is like when you, especially when you read the web novel, which I, I am actually reading right now. <laughs> That is one of the things that's just a constant, like, just, just, he's a degenerate to the point where his, yeah, 
Yeah. Saying the word degenerate. Yeah, how right. Me. Yeah, how right wing of him. Anyways, so <laughs> yeah, with uh, with the web novel, yeah, that's that's the thing that constantly comes up. Rudy's a kind of a massive degenerate. He's actually described at one point because his maid looks at him as having a disgusting smile that is completely reminds her of people who like buy sex slaves. Like, that's, he's just constantly <laughs> described by, like, yeah, the people around them. This, this is the least, based. yeah, this is the Super least cute based. baby possible. With, the most he, remi he reminds her of the nobles that she used to serve with huge, obese, star but, uh, fat, and... Which is <laughs> ironic, considering uh, the, where he came from, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> the whole, sense. the whole point is that she remind she, <laughs> she reminds him, the baby reminds okay. her of the the fantasy analog of him of his previous life. Uh, a very complicated sentence. You um, I'm not sure how much they go into this in the actual light novel, but um, Naretsu, you know why this glorious man was kicked out of his fucking house? Why? All right, so they actually toned this down for the light novel rather than the web novel, so. In the light novel, he was kicked out of his house because he was masturbating at his, when his during his parents' funeral. He was in his room masturbating. His father's funeral, specifically. Yeah, father. Yeah, his father. In the web novel, he was kicked out because he was doing that, but he was masturbating to child pornography. <laughs> <laughs> it goes hard. Ooh, that's pretty... I can see why they toned that down. <laughs> Oof! Oof! Yeah, the big Twitch streamer uh, moment. But yeah, both of those are really bad, right? It's it's kind of like obviously the CP's worse, but it's like oof! God damn! So, but you see, this is the thing, right? That gives me an idea of what we're dealing with here, right? Like, yeah, the whole so story is about okay, how does this how does this complete piece of shit become a better person? That's my impression of the novel. Yeah. Yeah, all right, so let's keep going. Never misses an opportunity to be a creep, lustfully ogling his new mother, his maid. He even steals the panties from his tutor, which he starts to call his holy relic. Very rarely does a scene go by where you are not reminded just how terrible of a human being Rudy is and was. Despite being reborn into brand new circumstances and with a brand new lease on life, Old habits die hard, as it were, and the little scoundrel spends far too long doing things that really he only gets away with narratively because everyone around far him thinks long. he's too young uh, to know what he's doing. This is, all right, we, the audience, hey, pause real quick, because a criticism that I kind of can get is that, I mean, I, I don't agree that the previous life of the protagonist really matters or is, it, is not relevant to an isekai. Or that they come from a different. But that's a very relevant. common complaint you see constantly. With people. Yeah, I disagree. I, I kind of disagree. I disagree with that, but I kind of ag I could agree with that that the the previous life is often of little consequence. Their their life experience of the previous life is their personality. Uh, in their it kind of it kind of depends because obviously you have the isekais where. Like oh it's a doctor or oh it's it's this. yeah I was I, I, that. so so that's that that is like the the past life or the past occupation being yeah I I I, no, I I get where you come I get where you're coming from but I just wanted to I'm gonna to make a weird fucking argue well not really an argument just a observation but the fact that it's called jobless reincarnation implies that everything in the past life is actually fairly relevant, otherwise they wouldn't mention that yeah, in the title, because, right? Yeah, because, again, from the descriptions, mother, uh, I always confuse him for Mother's Basement. God, also, um, last reflection, based on the description that I'm getting from him right now, and you two, right, together, right, joining those two together, I'm getting a fairly ba good idea of what the show is actually, well, the series is actually about, right? You've got the shithead, degenerate, asshole who's a horrible, parasitic human being who gets killed or whatever, and then he is reincarnated in a new life, but he is still the same old self, right? Yeah. And that's kind of, and that's kind of the point. That's, that's what the point is, right? 
And so when I realize, okay, that's the point, I'm just like, all right, <laughs> okay, I guess. Yeah. So, and so, I'm... To, so to complain, basically my problem here is he, he seems to be complaining about the fact that the show is about the point of the show. Right? Well, <laughs> like, also, his complaint is that another it's kind not... Of nature oh, bit, is that go first yeah well sorry but i i did i was just sitting on this for the last few minutes but oh, go ahead another thing is that from how the novel is structured because you know i'm not completely through the novel but i have spoiled myself just a little bit you know reading a bit ahead but it's structured into different life arcs and as i stay as i'm seeing the show tends to like one, it's adapting it, you know, it's adapting its structure, so it's not jumping around, it's going straight from, you know, infancy to childhood, you know, on and on, yeah, right? Yeah. And the idea behind that in the novel was that you get to see how he develops, you know, he actually does change quite a bit and actually develops a bit, you know, morally as the novel goes on. As he's talking about the show, though, it's like, he's complaining at or complaining about it for following its source material structure. Yeah. Yeah. That that's kind of what I'm getting. He hasn't had oh, yeah. Ru Rudy hasn't had that fucking moment. It's we, like we eight episodes we have, in. We, yeah, we we haven't actually like the 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 the, sh the anime hasn't got the same to the same point of development as the source material yet. But there is actual development that does happen. It just hasn't gotten there yet. So yeah. he's essentially just complaining. Again, he's just complaining about the point because he hasn't reached the point yet, right? Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, you're, keep, keep going. Just Yeah, yeah the, 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 he complained going. that his character development into a better person isn't finished as a four-year-old. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, I am. Look, listen, listen. K kids can decide... A lot of things. <laughs> this is. Uh, I'm trying. I want to be careful because I don't want to get banned from YouTube for saying something horribly. Oh, you mean you would get banned? <laughs> I would get banned. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm trying. Like, look, look. All I'm saying is that we should. Kids cannot consent, and they shouldn't be allowed to to you know get tattoos and all this other stuff. But they can definitely get very powerful medications. That's that's. that's absolutely friend <laughs> that's all i'm saying they need to get medications that have got cute anime traps on the box and tell them to see now you <laughs> are dating the video <laughs> by the uh, way okay. it, i'm just gonna put this out here like so we understand morals and the lack of morals on my end but if we got a spot deal from uh, o otokonoko pharmaceuticals <laughs> i would absolutely accept it in a heartbeat for money <laughs> Hey, I'll take the, I'll take your money. <laughs> My morals can be brought, is what I'm trying to say. Oh God! All right, let's keep going before I dig this thing. I'll even dig. No better. Rudy is the make it or break it point for people. Is there a reason why he acts the way he does? Yes. Will it eventually tie yeah. into the narrative in a positive way? Well, it definitely looks like that may end up being the case. Does I mean... the author take advantage of this? I am. Very fucking intrigued by what I just. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I'm. I am. He I, ended up I, doing I, something um... like he got bullied, and I think like as part of the reason he dropped out of uh, school, as I recall, he got bullied by some students, and like they beat the shit out of him, and then like tied him up naked at in the front of the gate or something. Jeez. The really Christ. fucked up shit that you know Asian kids apparently do. Yeah, it's it's fun because the light novel goes into it that he he deliberately went to a worse ranking school so that he could, you know, be a big fish in a small pond. But then you know, low ranking schools has people that don't really care about education and. and that that whatnot. makes that puts an interesting like character element to um to Rudy like just as a person that. In his past life, a lot of his failings just came from not applying to or himself. He wanted to be a big fish in a small pond and basically be recognized for nothing. And that came back to bite him in the ass. And rather than go and face it, he ran the fuck away from it, dropped out of school. 
So, like, that's that's something they established pretty early, his personality and his flawed outlook on life. Yeah, and then I'm guessing over the course of his time in the Isekai world, he is going to develop. And, um, you know, people criticize yeah. him being the pervert as a protagonist and ask, oh, why can't they just do some other thing? But when you think about it in a modern context... Oh, we we can understand a perverted protagonist because we've seen a lot of them in the past so we can understand we can understand that type of archetype and we can build on that through Mishoka Tensei's narrative right mm. oh, the whole idea of database storytelling and all that shit quoting the big boy books here yeah. Yeah. so so yeah no that's yeah that's, see, see there's a lot going on a lot going on here, but I'm so I'm interested to see where a mother's basement takes us. So let's let's listen to what we have. Last reflection. For unnecessary oh, fans. God damn it! I didn't every get... opportunity. Also, yes, the purpose of Rudy's deviant nature, I hope, is to take someone like him who his old society, our society, would consider to be irredeemable, and slowly over time make him into a better person, or at least not much of a freaking creep. It basically should be a redemption. Okay, okay, I understand you. Said you freaking. You yeah. didn't have the balls to say fucking. So, so I know, I know, we're pro he's probably gonna get worse. But this is the I want to note that this is the point where I'm starting to notice. Right, <laughs> this is the point. This is the point where look the I'm, man, he, the, the man mask, who has the mask has slowly started to drop. There's no right? mask. He's fucking Canadian. We already know that this is just how they operate. But no. Yeah. I I don't I don't want to be told about morality and, or lectured about fucking morality to somebody who has that much blatant weeb shit in the background. I'm sorry. The whole the, uh, looking at this, looking at his room, I'm just thinking I hate the fact that he has this much money. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Um but you see also what the fuck is that fucking outfit he's wearing? He looks like Oh, uh, that's that's his that's his signature outfit that he wears. Yeah, that's some kind of, you know, door... How, how do you call those people? Valet, whatever? Uh, valet type thing. He looks yeah, like, like a cross between, like, a hipster nerd and a metrosexual. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm making fun of people's appearances again. Let's go. Uh, well, okay. But, okay, so yeah, I, I just wanted to just point out, yeah, so I'm starting to see it. Like, he's starting to let his disgust kind of leak into the video now. So How can we fi fix the last of takes fashion time. sense? It takes countless events in the narrative to show Rudy both different ways to live and How also possible consequences for his previous life. Rudy is not community. a perfect protagonist. Like you can I'm look at other camera. reincarnated protags like Rimu <laughs> or mine. Oh who... no! <laughs> did he just compliment fucking slime, Ellie? Oh yeah, did... he did. Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> So go on, Ellie. Go, ah. Do it. Come on. Get it out of the way. <laughs> now, I can't hold my back in because I know he criticized his slime a little bit. All right. Yeah, I, all right. I can hold oh, it in. Being, being, you're actually showing restraint. That's good. That's good progress. Good character development. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ellie is the anti Rudy of the group. Yeah. I'm probably more like Rudy than, than most people. <laughs> I don't think you're not. not I don't not, think I'm you're not that, that bad though. Up. I'm not that fucked up. No, but I'm, I mean, I, and my name is Nuritsu the Pib, so come on, <laughs> let's be real here. I like, I like me some. Lyrics, I think okay? most of the audience would be like, "No, Nuritsu, you're not the one most like Rudy here. There's a guy right next to you." <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. Oh, all right. In my life. Could arguably be considered a little too perfect. Their knowledge is a bit overplayed for the plot, or their magical abilities become so overpowered as to make challenges for them almost anything but. Rudy, though, hey, doesn't have a, a counterbalance early on to make him more palpable before his character development starts to really kick in. I'd say in many ways that his nature would make him really good friends with our boy Kazuma from Konosuba. Kazuma no. But for Kazuma, no. however, no matter terrible... They hate each other. That... Kazuma isn't that fucked up, though. Like... That, that, that seems like a really odd comparison, because Kazuma is, like... He's fucked up in the comedic sense, not yeah, fucked up yeah, in the it, genuine it's, sense. It's, it's very different. It's very, very different. Um... Yeah, there's a difference between, like, the real-life kind of fucked up and the 
comedic, oh, I'm a failure, haha. But Kasama is I very sociable. Yeah, he's, that he, too. Yeah. He's, he's popular, he has friends, he has friends outside of, of his group. He knows people, he has connections, he can make he can make good first impressions. He tries to get along with people, it's just the people he's saddled with are fucking misfits. Yeah, <laughs> and if Rudy, I mean, in, in fanfic time, if Rudy were so, to somehow meet Kazuma, Rudy would be kind of just be jealous of Kazuma. Yeah. And and Kazuma would look at him and like, you're a weird kid. Kazuma yeah. would look at him and be like, you're fucking disgusting. <laughs> yeah. If he, I mean, if he would, if they would meet in, you know, I guess a neutral ground of sorts. And Kazuma would, you know, see his personality instead of his child's form. When are we writing our isekai fanfiction? Uh, sometime, maybe. Write, write, write that novel, Ellie. You know you want it. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, but no, but they, the I don't think they'll on. they'll be friends at all. That's the main. That's the main issue. Yeah. All right. Let's let's keep going. Person. He's. It's balanced by the fact that everyone he interacts with is terrible in their own way. Konosuba is nothing if not an example of how to make an interesting narrative chock full of terrible people. So, this, no, for Cosmo pause. specifically, makes yeah. his life- Yeah. I don't know Here's about that Here's the thing, one, a lot of people try to say that the cast is like, are terrible people. It's more that they're dysfunctional people. It'd be like if you watched Friends or something and was like, everyone here is a terrible piece of shit. Yeah, rather than yeah, just it's, dysfunctional. It's, it, 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 yeah, yeah, I agree with that. It's point. not like it's Seinfeld in which everybody actually is terrible. Yeah. It's, terrible it's and functional good. and dysfunctional and not terrible. Mm. Yeah. Alright, let's keep going. Somewhat miserable, or at least not ideal, and it works to balance his nature. Something Rudy doesn't have. In fact, Rudy has been lucky in his reincarnation. Okay. I don't agree okay. that Kazuma and Rudy have a similar personality, which is well, kind of his basis of his my, argument my, right my, now. My, 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 my issue here is not just that, but does he need a grounding force? Like, th this is my problem here. Is like, if the point of the show is that it's supposed to be about the development of this character from a point A, which is being legitimate such and such and also, such and such, right? he isn't terribly lucky his parents are like semi all right former adventurers he knows how learning works to an extent so he can get like a bit of a head starter on understanding language but like in terms of just like the world around him he develops a basically the same pace as everyone else yeah so so my but my thing is like he starts at point a He's obviously moving towards a point B, which will be, like, him... Also, I'm sorry. If this was my mom, I would absolutely lost over it. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is my thing, right? Is like, he's... He has a point A. He's moving towards point B. Does he really need some kind of, like, anchor? Opposing to force. To, okay. to tone down... To tone down his, like, traits. Because cause if the whole point is that his traits are... Exa like the fact that he is a degenerate is like over the top, right? Because that's who he is. The opposing force is the world, not something. Yeah, within. that's what I'm. That's what I'm getting at, right? Is like the opposing force, like because the way that um, Glass Reflections here is describing it is that, um, like in Kazuma's case, it's the characters around him that are like that grounding force. Whereas here, as you said, it's like no, he doesn't need to have like like he doesn't need to have like a sister that is like a Cindere type like chick that's always foiling his perverted schemes or some shit you know like, he doesn't need that also that's not the point Kasuma is the grounding force in the world of Konosuba yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, so I actually have a question Ellie um yeah yeah so you've watched this video all the way through before or is this uh yeah so? once it's been like two weeks ago but I did all right um does he actually explain any of like because he he went very briefly over Rudy's past, but and only showed bits that like hinted at why he's fucked up? But I haven't seen him actually explain any of that yet, like in detail. I don't recall. I, 
he had a throwaway line before where he was like like when 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 the the school gates showed up where he's like yeah okay so there are reasons why he is the way he is that's the grounding he, of the show the past his he, past is the yeah. grounding of the show but he just kind of like but but glass reflection is just kind of hand waves that away almost like it doesn't matter where he's like like oh, i've you know, watched etchy shows in like the 2000s i've watched some really yeah. fucked up HOVAs from the 90s. Rudy doesn't come across as nearly as ungrounded or ridiculous as any of those. Like, there's <laughs> there's at least a reason as to why he's like this, rather than, gotta, yeah, this gotta, person's you, just doing you this. Gotta, you, gotta, you gotta watch that Golden Boy, mate. <laughs> fucking, Golden Boy um, is fucking amazing. I would suggest yeah. everybody watch that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, to go back to a previous thing, Way back, like twenty minutes or maybe not ten minutes, more likely. Um, previous lives in Isekai rarely matter, and most yeah. of the time they don't change. I do want to bring up Naofumi from Shield Hero, where his previous life explicitly doesn't matter because it's all about the betrayal and when he first comes into the new world. That's the whole. Now, now, Fumi's interesting, yeah, because he he kind of goes in as a, like a normal person, right? He's just a college student who's going to the library to read books or whatever, right? And then he gets thrust into this world where he, like, I know that there was an argument I think Mother's Basement made about how like Nal Fumi was like very like oh, he always expected all of this shit and he did it when that really wasn't the case, and I have no idea where the fuck he got that from. Because he got, he goes into the world and he's like, okay, so it's an Isekai world. I'm just gonna do. He my basically thing. walks into the betrayal because of his own naivety. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he he's naive. He's naive about it. It's not that he like had this kind of um. What? How 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 was it described at the time? This was years ago, obviously. So I'm trying to like I'm recall. I'm going through the files, right? Um, in my brain. Um, like he didn't have this kind of like. What's the word I'm looking for here? Insight. Um, no not insight it's like he he expected things to just be served to him on a platter right like he expected oh i am a oh, hero no. one of the i all am the one of other the heroes guys. of this world all I the am other one guys of the did heroes yeah yeah i am one of the heroes of this world i am i am great man i deserve this you know i am i am the, co- the coolest man and then that you know leads to him being betrayed no he gets betrayed because he's just naive about the world that he's in and he thinks that oh okay so i'm just gonna go through and do this and, and then it ends up not going well for him and then after the betrayal it is the betrayal that sends him down the spiral of his character right and then the rest of the show is essentially just about him redeeming himself and coming to understand the world that he is in and how it functions and becoming what he ends up being, right? Yeah. So, but yeah, this was a sidestep of a this previous was a bit point. of a side, a bit of a sidestep of the previous point, but 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 that actually is interesting because again, it it sh- kind of shows. Remember how that- awful the discourse was around fucking Shield Hero when it came, when it got adapted. Fucking remember that me. seems Don't... so quaint now. Yeah. <laughs> that was like so, what two twenty eighteen. Yeah, something like that. But um, but to go back, to get back on track, right? Um, I was going to make the point of, um, like, the glass reflection here seems to be kind of hand-waving that away in, in both points where he's saying, oh, well, okay, so the, the, the past life doesn't usually particularly matter that much, so it probably doesn't matter a whole lot here. Um, there are hints at some reasons as to why he is the way he is, but I'm just going to gloss over that in, in favor of talking about how disgusting he is, right? So... That that that's a problem that I'm seeing here is that I would ac- I actually find the idea of okay so what are the justifications for why he acts the way he acts right because obviously some people will go okay sure he was bullied pretty harshly but that's no excuse to you know, to you know do blah, blah, blah. there'll be some people like that but I think if you asked most people they'd be like okay you know that's somewhat somewhat sympathetic right. But obviously, I don't think Glass Reflection here has any sympathy whatsoever. So <laughs> it's um, let's keep nation to be given support from a loving family to have a natural aptitude Christ for this world's ripped. magic. But these things do not directly <laughs> help him with his 
actual problems. That being to take this new life presented before him and make the best of it. So of course, this does end up conflicting a bit with one of my beliefs that it gets better later is not an excuse. If you watch the first few episodes of this and are turned off by Rudy's attitude, the over-sexualized focus on secondary characters at times, and just all of the things that okay, could be pause considered real quick super- Because, I mean, I get his point of not, if not wanting to bother with shows that get better later, but you kind of, I mean, in general, miss out on shows that have a long development arc. Look, Zoomers don't have the attention span to watch things that are more than I, twelve episodes. I, I, I now. actually, I actually think, like, I recall that he's. Wait, how the fuck did this did this guy watch through zero zero seventy nine Gundam and like it, despite Amara's like character development being incredibly slow bit or slow build? I don't know, but um. I, I I recall that he's had this opinion for quite a His while. His opinion of Amro would have shifted if he if Amro had touched Ted at any time. That's basically probably, it. Pro- pro- probably, but he he's had this opinion of um. He he's a big proponent of like the free episode rule and that kind of thing, where it's like if you're not feeling it by like three episodes or whatever, then you should probably drop it or like you you should. That's not even lot- really a rule. That's more. I I hate that that's like a rule and not just a suggestion of. Mm don't waste your time which would be the very the very yeah. natural thing i yeah it's and see this is why i just i've, I've started to just wipe just, just just, <laughs> just you know i can't them, you know? i can't you know support some type of activity you should do while watching anime but like, at least drink and relax like i think like i think that the the idea of oh but it gets good later bro uh, can apply to stuff like one piece right like, the issue being that One Piece and other, like, long-running ass shonens, right? Like, I guess Black Clover would, at this point would be another example of that, because that's been going on for quite a while, right? You have these long-running shows. Like, it is a fucking time investment to get into either way, right? Reading or watching it. It is a fucking time investment to get into that. So if you're not feeling that time investment early on, the idea that oh well, but it gets better later on though, um, is is kind of mute. If that get better later on is like twenty hours away or some shit, <laughs> right? <laughs> Maybe longer than that. Like at I the think same someone... time, like uh... yeah. Okay, so someone... oh, as somebody sorry. who's watched like quite a bit of older science fiction, right? Just in terms, of even even Western science fiction, there there are a lot of shows that only really come into their own second season, third season, whatever. That's not an uncommon thing. Stories develop and TV or TV stories tend to develop and evolve more slowly. We're just really in this weird culture right now where we expect it to evolve as soon as possible because we're used to like binging things. We're used to, we're used to immediate gratification. It goes back to like, did you ever read that article? I linked it elsewhere but um did you ever read that article um with martin scorsese talking about streaming services and uh, what it, how it's kind I, of changing I, cinema i recall i recall you linking it but i might have read it. Over it because because i was um busy at the time you so absolutely to need to read it like there's so much in it that you know a lot oh, of yeah. people flip their shit because you know he wasn't approving of their like fucking dumb consumer bullshit but like he he makes a genuine point that it is fundamentally changing what was established as the art form of cinema. And, and I think in that similar fashion, streaming services have fundamentally well, changed how we engage with anime. Well, and of course, just... I, and by by extension, of course, Shosha too has, has changed light novels yeah. and whatnot. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So sidetrack on, on the same kind of like, wavelength is the uh, the, the current um, debating and arguing about Netflix, right? And how Netflix is releasing anime as, like, the binge thing, right? Where instead of releasing it weekly, they are translating it, subtitling it, and then releasing it all at once on, like, a set date. Like, like you typically quite a while, like, maybe a month after it's come out or, you know, maybe, on, like, in that same time frame, Right. And a lot of people are really fucking mad about that. And they're like, oh, it's horrible. And it's like, okay, okay. 
I I understand that weekly watching right can be good. It's it's, it's valid, right? I, I, there's nothing wrong with sitting down after work or whatever. You come home, you download your episode or whatever, and you just sit down and watch it each week, right? Nothing wrong with that. That's fine, right? But I I don't understand this idea of the instant gratification. I need it now. I, I, I want to watch it now. Why do I have to wait a month? Ugh. I want to watch it now while it's airing in Japan. Ugh. They would not have survived the 2000s. Where you were damn lucky oh, if you even got fan yeah. subs within the same and year of it being released. And this is, that's my thing. Because, like, I, I've grown up in this sort of, like, Crunchyroll era where, like, shows have, have started to, you know, they come out, like, pretty much when they air, right? Like, that's kind of what I grew up with, but now that I'm actually getting older, I, I actually find myself more enjoying just like, hey, I'll just watch it at my own pace. Maybe I'll like wait till a couple of episodes are out and then I'll watch them back to back or I'll wait till it's completely finished and then I'll just like, I don't know, I'll watch like three episodes a day or something or I'll watch the whole thing at once and binge it or I'll like, just, just decide for myself what I'm feeling like, right? Maybe I'll be watching it and be like, eh, I'm not too into this, then I'll, I'll just I'm gonna move to something else. And um, it's it's weird. Like, I see these people complaining about how Netflix is doing it, and I, I just, I find it weird, because I don't know why. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't understand the necessity of getting the product the same time as the Japanese, right? And I guess the main argument could be, oh, well, it means I can't be part of the conversation about the show or, you know, because other people are watching it, like, you know, via perfectly regal means with perfectly regal subtitles, right? <laughs> and and they're watching it weekly and they're talking about it. And I can't be a part of the conversation because I don't want to pirate or whatever, right? This reminds like, me of a, of a, like, thing I noted when I watched... Um... What was it? When I watch uh, Scamboli's really god awful Evangelion video, um, where he was basically mad that everybody was telling him that he didn't get it because he didn't <laughs> like it because it wasn't like Gurren Lagan. Um, All right, right. All and right. there's this thing he said where after years, I finally got the chance to watch this. And I'm like, do these people seriously only ever watch shit if it comes out on the streaming service that's so fucking alien to me yeah dude, all right dude, to go I... back to the <laughs> we need okay, to go okay. off one, this one, streaming one, one, train one, one final point one final point based off what lolly just said because i want to make is personal history i watched the original evangelion on some fucking shitty ass watch anime now fucking probably some kind of malware infested shitty ass pirate streaming site where i had to like because back then internet was like dial up right yeah. so you'd have to like fucking pause that shit man if only full was here to flex day. on the both dude, of us dude exactly but like <laughs> listen right like i i managed to watch eva when i was like i don't know probably 16 or some shit, right? I, I watched it on that shitty-ass pirate site, and I fucking... Because cause, I mean, back then, how the fuck were you going to watch Eva, <laughs> right? There was no DVDs back in the day for that, or, or, like, releases on Netflix or whatever for that shit, right? You'd have to fucking pirate it. So I'm fucking watching it, and I'd have to sit there and let that shit fucking load for, like, half the day, right? And then I'd come back to... Like, I'd have it on a tab... And I'd have to be doing other things, or I'd have to let up because we only had one computer in the house, right? So you'd have to let other people play on it and just have it loaded in the background. And then I'd have to wait for that shit to fucking finish, da like downloading on this fucking real player bullshit built in embedded nonsense so, at 240p and fucking watch either, right? So what I'm going. What the fuck is Skimboli's excuse? <laughs> So, <laughs> I'm just going to say that before we, we taper off of this and get back to, like, actually talking about the video, I just want to say this to, like, make parts of the audience feel old. Episode 1, part 1 of 3. Seven minutes <laughs> oh, long. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know that <laughs> Ah, man. But anyway. Also, you know that's, working... You know that's, 
<laughs> working as free seasons and the entire development of the I mean the romance I guess takes three seasons long to come to a conclusion and then you have a nice spin-off to watch as well nice. working is uh, okay. nice so, I know we gotta move on but you know what that's been replaced with now Lolly? it's been replaced with those fucking YouTube videos where they have like a giant overlay over like 40% of the screen no the like, replacement <laughs> for that is somebody <laughs> watching somebody shit out they garbage review and then pretending to have an opinion that's what people do with yeah that, that, now too. Uh, it's like the entire that. internet has become a or something where they just talk oh, about things man. they don't even watch that's fucking great anyways uh, we're well, sitting here yeah, staring yeah, at we, rudy we, about uh, to we, take we, panties yeah we, we just we fuck it yeah yeah superfluous to the plot or the world that is being built around it i do not blame you i have avoided countless harem anime of varying popularity because I have limits to what I feel like handling when it comes to fan service and how it does or does not benefit the aspects of the show uh, I'm watching. So what aspects am I watching this show for, you ask? Well, that's easy. The massive amount of fantasy world building and, most importantly, that Sakuga, though. Interestingly uh, enough, I kind of the disagree that, that, that Mishuko Tensei's world building is anything special. Yeah, a lot of people seem like a lot of the people that I've talked to that are watching us are talking and saying how they watched it from World Bin. Oh my god, I wonder if these people watch the same fucking review and they're just spitting that opinion back at me. I uh, I wouldn't be fucking surprised. I I so okay. I guess this kind of goes into like a topic on fan service, right? Because the topic of fan service in anime has been a hotly contested, hotly debated subject for years now, right? The idea of Oh, it's yeah, to losers Siri. online who don't just shut up and watch yeah. the bullshit. Yeah, it's like, um, what are the common arguments I've heard over the years? It's like, oh, it doesn't add anything to the show. Oh, it's it's oh, it's a distraction. Uh it it you know it's bad because it fucking you know. Da, ba, 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 the ba. problem I would say is that at some point in the 2010s. Partly because of, like, YouTube, we've actually came to, con to the conclusion that, like, all of anime as a whole is some sort of higher art form and not just pop culture entertainment. Like, we live in an era where people seriously discuss, discuss like, the basic bitch, poorly thought out character motivations of, like, Thanos. It don't even make sense if you understand anything about how much shit is in the universe and how you're never gonna run out even if you filled the entire G or Milky Way well, full of people. Well, the universe is, like, constantly expanding to... Yeah, uh, and, and, but my point is is that you have these people who, like, they, they have these long-form discussions about things that honestly aren't really that worth it. Yeah, I so, mean, I, I, the, the only way I would, I would, I mean, I kind of slightly disagree in that you should really... I can really... understand, understand in the cultural anthropology. Ugh, cultural yeah, anthropology that's my main main... Sense. It's very popular, so talk about the thing that is popular, and yeah, you'll get some su arguments against your very deep arguments on, pop on the shallow popular thing. But I think I don't really mind that all that much. It's more of if people are give shallow arguments about shallow subjects that yeah, becomes an I'm, issue. See, if someone came to me and actually had a pretty good argument about like fan service and whatnot, and I've had some like over the years, I've had some pretty dis big discussions with people over it because I'm obviously pretty pro fan service. I think I think there are cases to be made where fan service does hinder the quality of a work. Right, I think that if you have it in like the wrong places, or you don't like the way that I always when use fan service. People is tend that... to talk about fan service. They tend to frame all of it as a oh, the guy Pratt falls into like the girl's crotch or something, a la To Love Ru. But with To Love Ru, they're doing they're exaggerating that to a comical degree. Yeah, because that's the point. That's the point of To Love Ru. The fan is, the fan service. Uh, you know, that's the whole idea of the lucky pervert or the accidental pervert which is more common now with Rudy's case, it's all driven by his own internal problems. Yeah. It, it, it's about the narrative. It's narratively. Yeah. You know, like right? when the fan service happens, it's something he would have naturally have done given his character. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing, the thing is, is you have these people that will think that all, as you said, that's like all fan service is the same. There's no distinction between different types of fan service. And I've always, 
been of the opinion that a fan ser- a good fan service should be like the cherry on the top of the cake, right? Shouldn't be the whole cake, right? Like it should, like you shouldn't, like if you've for got a simpler, a, for a unless sim- unless the show is like built around the the fact that it's fan service, right? Like you know you've got your DXDs and your um to love and all that is kind really of stuff. Good. It is really good. I I gotta watch the newer stuff. I haven't watched the newer stuff. I miss I miss the old art style. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I, I, most people avoided the new season because of I, that. I, I, don't, I don't like it. I, I I tried like the first episode and I was like, nah. I don't oh feel on god, this. similar thing. But there's a reboot of Battle Athletes coming out, and I'm getting the same yeah, vibe of man. The last time I watched this, it was like. I could I could Late get into 90s, a, I early could get, 2000s into, I could get into it I could get into a tangent about DXD but this is going on long enough right so I have to put my foot down on the tangents yeah but, I uh, said this might but, be your shortest video but I'm really considering yeah, about that. considering about, that. well it turns out it turns out we have a lot to talk about kind of tangentially related to this right but the when thing it, is but it doesn't back, feel that long because it's but, actually been pretty fun yeah because we're actually having a we're actually having a good discussion but to go back to fan service because that's what he's talking about and what i want to talk about right is that like yeah like like unless the show is like dedicated to the fact that it is fan service in which case yes it being the whole cake makes sense or if the fan service is like narratively driven like it is now where it can be like the icing on the cake or something right most of the time what people look at is like the cherry on top of the cake and they go oh all fan services like that particular cherry even when the cherry is on like the wrong kind of cake right so they'll go you know like the, the, and and that's it's the over generalization that all fan services is exactly the same take stripped of all context of why it's happening what kind of show it is you know and that kind of stuff like i again I think that the criticism can be valid in certain situations. Well, the thing they throw back every at you. single time. Well, the thing they yeah. throw back at you is that if the narrative calls for that, clearly you need to change the narrative a bit. And like, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. this is, comes to or this comes down to like a deeper problem I see constantly because I never, never see this quote said anymore, and it's very telling that it's just kind of fallen out of the public memory, but. The argument against fan service is that, oh, it's uncomfortable to show in front of people. Again, we switched over to a streaming audience. It's uncomfortable to watch it in front of other people, or it's uncomfortable to watch it in front of my fa- or my family or whatever. And the answer to that is that art ultimately serves itself. Yeah. that's yeah. That was a mentality for years, and I just don't see that opinion expressed anymore. I wonder where the hell it went. Yeah, I agree. Um, anyway, let's 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 keep listening to Glass Reflection moan about fan service. Let's keep going. Studio behind Mushoku Tensei, Studio Bind, hasn't been the lead studio on any production before. This is their first series. Damn, coming out of the gate strong, ain't you? That being said, Bind didn't come out of nowhere and is instead a company created out of the mutual understanding between existing studios, Egg Firm, and White Fox. What this means is oh. that if you've wondered why some of the animation from White Fox's series ReZero have been, perhaps, a bit lacking compared to the show's initial season, well, maybe this is where a bunch of their talent went. Of course, I could not know what I'm talking about, I am just making guesses, but, well, you know, that's a thing. And maybe I can't he could have looked up say that to it a staff. True. Could have looked up the staff. It's not like um, it's not like Anime News Network's only real useful purpose was having an extensive what, database um, or anything. I wonder, I wonder, what, because White Fox sounds very familiar to me. What, what itch? Um, White Fox <laughs> has done good stuff. Didn't they uh, yeah, uh, work yeah, on uh, I know, Katana I know Gatari? I think so, yeah. yeah. I, and I, I believe I they, they also I did um, Yotra Senki? Stuff. Oh, maybe, yeah. No, Yotra well, Senki was not. Oh, yeah, yeah that was I not, don't know. yeah. Um, yeah, I know they've done good stuff. I'm asking if they've done itchies before. Like, what, don't what think itchies so. have they worked? Yeah, like what, what, what specifically like itchy type shows have they worked on? I that don't, and it's I a don't bit, know. That is a bit harder, and maybe this is just something I noticed, but it's also kind of a little bit harder to just attribute things specifically to one studio now because there's a lot yeah. of freelance uh, freelancers in the anime industry because a lot of companies unfortunately <laughs> aren't on staff. Because working for a company is shit. 
Unfortunately, <laughs> yes, and that's a major problem. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a big, that's a big problem. So, so yeah, I agree. It's, it's um, we're not, we're not in the in the same time period where it was like you could look at like a studio and go, oh yeah, that studio is the pinnacle of quality. These oh, days, Madhouse is making it. Yeah. Oh man. Um, fuck yeah. Madhouse is. Our uh, studio it, or... dean. Oh, it's going to be trash. Yeah. Exactly. Like because talent has been moving around quite a lot, and because it's like it's it's not. It's kind of like being. It's kind of like being like oh, Bethesda's working on a game. Oh, not Bethesda. Oh, um, Gonzo. When is the next Bioware? Next studio game? Bioware. That's the one I'm thinking of. Bioware. Yeah, when is, when is Gonzo's next RPG? anime is coming out? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Bioware is working on a new RPG. Man, I hope it's as good as their old ones, like KOTOR. <laughs> you know you know what I mean? Like, man, I hope it's as good as Mass Effect 1. <laughs> I'm going to posit a theory, uh, Naretsu. You can probably yeah. track the raw amount of offense something is going to generate based off of its production values, because I see that there's a lot of people that hop on the show specifically because they're um for a bat- yeah. lack of better word soccer friends they're yes. only there for the pretty visuals and stuff like that um hey, hell glass Re- glass reflections even brings that up yeah was like, hey. so i think i i wonder if you could track that like you could be if you were to try to predict what show would cause the biggest well, shitstorm, you could probably track well, it. Well, Shield, that. I wouldn't say Shield Hero had a lot of. No, with Shield Hero, uh, it was it because of shit that was going on. Well, yeah, 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 it. that that too. But it, I mean, it had, it had a couple of moments that were okay. Like, well, I wouldn't say it was amazing, but it was it was okay. <sighs> Ain't gonna bring that up. We're not Nick <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, let's let's keep going was misplaced when i mentioned that this show has the potential to be a contender for anime of the year it is solely based on these production values in a season chock full of amazing shows both yeah. new and carried over from last year the level of quality in this series visually gives it a massive edge over the competition for the title there is just so much good here and not just from the animation the awkwardly from the soundtrack and, sound like design, and, and the world building especially has been thoroughly engaging rudy's father well Probably just as he much of a degenerate as he. The world building. No, yeah, because well, the, uh, he, he's just he's just getting to it now. Like he spent like a. Long oh no! Video. He's he, he's sk- he skipped over the world building and starts talking about the characters again. All right, keep going because he's talking <laughs> yeah, about how right. Rudy's father's a degenerate somehow? Question mark. All right, let me. Yeah, he is. Let, let me let me actually listen to what he has to say. Then. He is has lived the life alongside his wife that while only hinted at and not shown gives off this very interesting vibe. They used to be adventurers. They are at the point in their lives that most narratives don't get to. We don't see the leads of adventuring parties go off and start families. That's the type of story that only well, exists in an epilogue. And both Rudy's tutor is- <laughs> The thing is, it very much exists in this white novel because it is exactly the thing that is in an, in an epilogue or side story or side chapter or whatnot. It literally is in the in the, in the past uh, post uh, in the side chapter at the end of the life first life novel is about how Zenith meets up with Paul and gets kind of married. Mm. Why are this so, protagonist's parents blank slates? I don't well, get it. well, here's here's the thing, right? Like again, you mentioned like he's glossed over the world building to talk about the characters again. That's exactly what he's done because the the two like the adventure is hooking up after their own adventure and marrying and having kids that's not the world building see this is that's... why i say i think the people i've had conversations with probably watched this video because they will always say in the vaguest sense that they're watching it for the world building and i'm like what like world this, building like, in particular like, like this whole video right the idea that there's combat maids the idea that you know there's like some dwarves somewhere that might have fallen well, into some dire straits. Like, what? What the fuck are we talking okay, about? Here? And okay, they can't so, point to a single one. Okay, so let me let me kind of lay out my problem with this video right now with this this particular like wheel building thing, right? I because again, I'm the guy that's sitting here. I have no knowledge about any of this, right? I don't know anything about this show, right? When he's talking about wheel building, but he doesn't actually talk about wheel, like, like when I think about wheel building, what I want to know about is okay, what's the magic system? 
how's the magic work in this world how how, how does physics work in this world how, what is the social societal structure of the world what type of society do they live in how what are the different class structures of you know poor meat middle class high class like what what is the like like are there monsters in this world right are there dragons in this world are there is there ma- like magical demon queens and that kind of thing, well right? all right that, that's can... that's the kind of stuff that, well 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 no, well you know ellie you don't have to explain that to me right I'm just saying that from a critique of this video standpoint, that's the kind of stuff I was expecting him to talk about, right? Like, he, I was expecting him to say, okay, the world building's really cool because they do this really interesting thing with the magic system where it's it's based off of um, this, this, and this, and, and you can only do magic, this, you know, things, and it's like, you know, or, hey, they do, they're in this society structure where, like, adventurers go, are, like, considered to be rather, you know, quite quite well revered so they get given like good pensions or something when they retire and yeah. that's why his family and that's why his family is able to hire combat maids or some shit you know you All know right. what i mean like, you, you get you get where i'm going with this right like yeah. that's the kind of shit so, that i want to know about <laughs> i i one thing if he he stop i believe that he is based solely basing all his opinions on the anime in the anime the world building is kind of minimal Mainly because Rudy is a child still and is not really well, leaving well, yeah, the and house. That, and that, and, yeah, and that makes sense because obviously, like the the focus of the of the show is yeah. at the moment on like the small, like like when you're a kid, right? Your perception of like your zone of influence, I believe. Like I think that's actually the official. I don't know, but there's like the idea of you have like an area that you are familiar with. Like, let's say, for instance, it's like the neighborhood you live in, right? You know the neighborhood you live in because you spend a lot of time in that neighborhood. Like, you go out with friends and you walk around or you... And Rudy like, is also still afraid to, uh, as a child to leave his new ho- house where he lives. So he knows even less. But to bring to the more important point, the light novel has a lot more world building but I, I would say that the world building is on par with other light novels. Just like the anime world building is on par with other isekai, fantasy isekai so, world building. So, do you f- so I reckon, I reckon Lolly would agree with me here. Um, so the, ba- the problem here is that he is conflating world building with characterization. I wouldn't even say that. I, don't, I actually don't know what the hell he's talking about. I think he just sees pretty things going on, and he thinks he can read it visually or well, something. Well, like if he, if you, if you open a discussion on world building with, hey, this, this, this thing about these characters, though, that that tells me that he's conflating those two things because ca- the characterization and like the characters themselves and like their settings and personalities and what they, you know, the the the, the where they are, right? That's not got anything to do with the wider world around them that's to do with them so that's why i'm saying that i think he's conflating he's conflating the characters and the characterization of those characters within the setting with the actual setting so he's using the wrong so really to 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 give in detail that like in the in the anime it never goes really into what paul does he protects the village and that's how he gets paid apparently that's it. Well, he's that's, his, ex- that's his job. He's an, he's an ex-adventurer who's retired, like presumably retired from adventuring. So he's yeah, so he's down, he's settled down in a village and just basically protects it and gets paid to protect it. Makes sense. Yeah, and and in the in the light novel it expands. He is part of a force that that protects the village and goes ventures into the forest because forests gather mana and if mana is concentrated it births magical beasts and magical beasts when left long enough will get stronger and they'll be able to attack and destroy kill and destroy villages right. and whatnot so they make regular excursions into the forest to kill magical beasts and let the mana will just you know have to gather gather again and do the same thing and this is a kind of a cycle thing. So they have a regular a st- a kind of a standing force that is paid the salary to protect and go into excursions into the forest. That is world building. 
Not and that, is, and that is not <laughs> what glass reflection is. No, <laughs> and this is the, this world building for what the what the father does and why and how. I think I think this world building is on par with other light novels. Yeah, I'd say that's fine. Like, I, I mean, I don't, I, I wouldn't say that it's like ama- amazing. I, I'd say it's good. So it yeah, and lo- just like, like it sounds, like it sounds, it sounds interesting to me that you have this idea of like a cycle of like the mana, and then I, c- I can assume that perhaps like when they kill these magical creatures, that mana that was used to create them would then just reconstitute itself into or the disappears earth. or you know whatever doesn't really I, I w- matter. I, I would, I would assume like you would, ha- if it's a cycle, then obviously it has to be a cycle. So I would assume that it reconstitutes into the earth, and then it will re emerge and then come back and then you know constant cycle of death and rebirth right which is something i've noticed a lot of japanese writers quite like um <clears throat> dark souls <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um yeah yeah so and then see that's the thing right if, if my if our friend arcada here glass reflection like actually talked about that um possibly in relation to obviously because the anime is not focusing on that right now in relation to the, the novels, like he could reference the novels and be like, "Hey, the world building in the novel is really, really good. I hope that shows in the anime, perhaps later on when we leave, you know, go off, right?" When oh no! In typical becomes... ad- adaptation uh, tradition, the world building and minor details of the world are kind of completely left out to spoil not... Lolly. Uh, to spoil you both a little bit, like when Rudy gets to the to the town, he gets access to a library and goes reads up on the history. You get a big, big exposition on the complete history of the seven thousand year old world, which is entirely cut from the anime. Right. So I can't, and you know, uh, uh, spending five pages on a history, a building, so, uh, world building, uh, and exposition I'm gonna, I'm gonna, isn't. I'm gonna, I'm gonna interrupt you, Ellie, because that's not really my point. My yeah, but because my, my point, my point is that that is like, if if Arcada had said, "Hey, this is this is some world building that's in the light thing," I hope that the anime gets to this, or it would be just you know, like like if it was like because because assumedly I don't know we like how many episodes in he made this video, right? So this is, that's another thing, right? So they might not have gotten to that point yet, but that, that, that but that's what I mean. If he's having, if he's trying to have a discussion about the world building. You should talk about the bloody world building. <laughs> yeah, and it's why I kind of I think that he I I I offered it as an explanation, but I don't really think that he's he read the light novel or you know that exposition because if you compare the both both of them, like all adaptation, exposition and world building gets cut dramatically in the anime adaptation. All right. All right, not not that it's well, anime adaptation is still have... very good, so don't right. not do not get on that. All right, let's get to magical abilities at least on par with him, if not better. And just like the ugh, the various aspects of how magic works in this world is extremely well presented, and how it it's shown to us at the same time that Rudy learns it. It's just so well done. But of course, some of it I'm not the greatest fan of, as the story keeps taking massive leaps through Rudy's childhood of only seven years just showing us the interesting moments. And that makes it feel like nothing else happens during the time where the camera isn't there despite so much time passing. And also the show wants- uh, Did he just cut from know. something earlier where he's already all like, this person isn't having some major character development. Also, it's cutting through his actual baby years where he's probably not focusing on or inwardly. Yeah, yeah, like, I don't know if I'd criti- like, cause it get, cause you have to think about like, Okay, this is an anime, right? Like, you can't imagine if, like, we got to like episode twelve and he's still a baby, right? That wouldn't actually be that interesting to what because there's a difference between a book and something that has an actual like timestamp, right? <laughs> like you, you, you have precious minutes to spend in an episode. To sh- it's kind of like what book skips Ellie, around you, a little bit as well. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. the 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 anime doesn't skip a single year that. The anime, the book, the anime doesn't doesn't skip a single year that the book does. The book goes from first first month to two years old to four year old, and then goes into five year old, and then 
skips to like seven year old, somewhat in that order, right. and then it skips from seven, basically from seven year old to ten year old also. Because there's only so much of a story you can really. Yeah, do and the anime. Perspective. The anime skips to the same ages, so there's not more to adapt. Right. So so, but my thing is like if he's because his complaint is that it's not showing like more of the in between time. My issue with that is obvious. Like, like, do you really need to know every time the character takes a shit? You know what I mean? Like, like I don't think like I think it would be a pain to have to try and find interesting stories or interesting things to fit in that time period, which is exactly why you would have such skips in the first place, right? Like. Y- Skip to parts that you think are relevant or are important to the character's development. You can leave out some of the more superfluous stuff, which is just like, hey, he had a good day today. He went out and he found some underwear in a drawer and he, <laughs> you know, he had well, fun not. time. Yeah, you and know, of course, you know, Rudy, Rudy says when something important happened during the skip, like, I can walk now. Which is kind of important when you yeah, grow yeah, from yeah. a baby. So, so it is. It is. It is. It is. So yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, one, 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 one more of the one sentence summarization of the, the what's important, but you know. All right. Let's get. Wants us to believe that Rudy never saw his healing magic wielding mother use magic at all for like his first year or so of life because you know the camera wasn't there to witness it with him. Well, but mm, yeah. Lolly, uh-huh. sure. you read this part. I he only really fucking noticed it because he had an accident in which he nailed the back of his head while crying in a chair to look out so he could actually see what the world is like. And then yeah, that's Rudy when she is, thinks to do it. Rudy is smart as a baby because he's just basically the mind of an adult. He wouldn't risk himself as a baby to get an injury. He wouldn't, you know, touch the stove or whatever. He's smart yeah. like that. Also... I was under depression. Did this kind of happened like in the first two months or so? It implies that it's after he starts being able to like lift himself up onto things because he climbs up on a chair. Mm, outside the question window. is how early that would be. Could would it be like? But like six it's not. Months? It's not an unreasonable way to frame something. Like this just yeah. got, this just kind of feels like the. Oh, actually, I wouldn't have worked like that. Yeah. Water doesn't freeze at that temperature, you know. <laughs> oh god! Oh, god. All right. <laughs> well, anyway, it's early. Rudy wouldn't risk himself anyway, so this is yeah, kind. Of, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of we're okay. We're almost. That we're almost there, guys. <laughs> we're almost there. Uh, let's get my disbelief for that. I guess. All in all, Mushoku Tensei has ended up becoming a show that I am following this season, but it is one that I also can't actively recommend. The bad parts that I can identify are usually deal breakers for a lot of people I know. And as I said before, I totally understand not wanting to watch this series on that basis alone. I'm also not watching this series because I expect those aspects to go away or for it to get better later, because even if it does, and I hope it does for my own enjoyment of the series, that's never enough of an excuse to convince people to trudge through the initial episodes if those aspects were something that they don't enjoy watching. So what does that mean as far as should you watch Mushoku Tensei? Well, okay. if you're like me and can somehow okay, just pause real your quick, eyes, but guess it is really kind of. I mean, it's fine if you don't want to waste your time. If the, you know, if the wider thing doesn't interest you, freeze frame. Don't w- freeze frame. You need this freeze frame to be the <laughs> thumbnail of the video. <laughs> no, yeah. know, Make your own thumbnails. Right. Yeah, but if I don't, if I mean, don't go like you know. I don't like Mac shows. Well, just watch these. Just watch the entire series filled with robots that you don't care about. It will get good eventually. This this is a explicitly about the character development and him getting a being a better person. If you want to see him being getting a better person, then you're going to see him being a bad person at first. There's no not getting around I mean- it. Like, I understand, like, the thing is, is I understand where he's coming from, right? I understand what he's trying to say. He's trying to be like, look, I I can't really recommend this to a lot of people because a lot of the stuff in it might trigger them. It might trigger the the poor people I recommend. I mean, with those people, Um, like, really, if their time is so valuable and there's a lot of elements they're not going to like in the first place... Maybe some things just aren't meant for some people. I know this is yeah, a shocker, I, but 
Yeah. Oh, I, no. Th- this this kind of goes back to when I had my like rants um, during that one gaming episode um, where we covered the, the guy going on about fan service and JRPGs, where I'm like, look, not everything is for everyone. If someone's like turned off by fan service and they hate they hate seeing women for some reason, I, I can't possibly imagine why. <laughs> why you wouldn't want to see women um, in in your anime? Um, like, just don't. You well, don't I am known to, to be a raging them. misogynist. You, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but you don't, you don't, you don't recommend. Like, you can still recommend it to them on the caveat, right? You can just say, "Hey, look, I'm watching this show." It, I know it's got some stuff in it that you might not be comfortable with, but hey, look, I, I personally really like it. You know, check it out in your own time, maybe, if you feel like it. You know, like, there are ways you can recommend stuff to people that, you know, even if it has stuff in it that they might not like, you can still be like, hey, you know, I'm enjoying this, you know. You might not like it, but, you know, you could give it a go. I, I think it's just, like, he's coming at this from the wrong angle i guess no look oh. when people are animating this show the show when you know mr mr adam anime son and fucking tokyo <laughs> is animating this fucking show like he needs to keep in mind the fact that some dumbass in the u.s is going to be watching anime in front of his parents in the living room for some goddamn reason streaming <laughs> and that they need to keep in mind the audience, uh, the, the 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 environment of the audience, and tone things down just a little bit. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, let's cap this off. Through Rudy, and hope that he gets some kind of comeuppance later on that, or if his attitude improves, then great. Absolutely, watch the series. Otherwise, no. There is a decent amount of good here that, for me, outweighs the bad, but only just enough so that I can watch the series and enjoy it enough to keep watching. But it absolutely stops the series from being top tier in my books. Uh, and thus, we have character reached development is bad. the end of the video. <laughs> As usual, there will be links in the description to watch <laughs> Mushoku Tensei on Funimation. And of course, a very oh, special yeah. thank you to my patrons, who I love and deeply uh, appreciate. Uh, we can specifically pause and do... Okay, we need to pause and go through each and every one of the people who is part of his Patreon so we can shame their asses. I'm going to email this fact to their employers so they get fired. <laughs> gonna, gonna get them canceled. <laughs> like, look, man, look at what they're, imagine, look what they're paid imagine. for. Do you want this person working for your com- for your company? Do you Ask want yourself. This, do you want this dirty weeaboo who watches AniTube and pays Fucking Fucking Thomas Wash, you goddamn cuck. I'm calling your ass out specifically, <laughs> Thomas Wash. <laughs> Motherfucker. Okay, so um <laughs> Okay. So let's um let's let's kinda I guess Meet me outside of Home Depot. So I'm actually like i I'm actually okay, I, this wasn't as bad as I thought, right? I, I, I thought this would be a lot more mask off, right? I thought this would be a lot more um Ew, it's gross, parents. Ah, it would have been better gross, if that was the case. It actually it would have been, been better, yeah. It would have been way more fun. But this is more just kind of like, it's really weird. Like, he doesn't really focus on what he what he should have focused on. He, he glosses over certain aspects that he probably should have extrapolated a bit more on. And there's a lot of other little like like it's it's like it's a pretty mediocre video, but there are like some tiny little mind wombs in there that just kind of niggle away at you a little bit, you know. Like so overall, I would I would say at least we got some pretty good discussion out of it. But I I yeah, this wasn't this wasn't really that great. So yeah, anyone else, anyone um, else got I, any I hope I didn't. Thoughts? I hope I didn't overhype this video. No, I, no, no, no. No, it was still a good one to cover because I mean, this uh, is something that. I mean, I mean, this is the thing. We got some pretty good discussion out of it on a number of topics. You know, I mean, you know, we went over a few. Things. Actually, did it so pretty I, concisely, all things considered. Yeah, yeah. This has been a this has been a really good one. So you know, really, at least we got we, at least we had fun. You know, at the end of the day, at least we had fun. Um. So yeah. And, so have you two got any more closing thoughts before we cap off? Um, um, Shuku Tensei is good. The world building is average, but you know, read it, watch it for its fundament for being the ground. 
Also for the, the character designs. Of all... The character designs are really pleasant. Yeah, it looks it looks very nice. Yeah, I've noticed I've, that. I've you've probably you follow me, so you saw me like uh, retweeting some <laughs> of the art. Yeah, no, it's yeah. it's very. Yeah. The the people who worked on the character designs understand how to um how how to make a Bisojo character work, and you know that's mm. that's nice on its own, just on the superficial aspects. Also, a Tokonoko Pharmaceuticals baby, we need. We need that advertisement. We will shill your product. Oh, God. If you hand me a paycheck, I Look, am easily brought out. Just, just, just be sure I am to a whore. hide it from your Just be sure to hide it from your parents, okay? <laughs> it's very, it's very okay, let's not go into the subject a bit more because we're going to get our asses killed. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to get yeeted so fucking hard. God damn it. All right, I'm, I'm cut. I'm ending it here because you're going to get fucking banned. All right, like, bye. This is yeah, later. <laughs> bye. Bye-bye.